Welcome back to Here and Now, everyone. Well, as we've already told you, today is the 97th anniversary of the Battle of Beaumont Hamill. And tonight, we have a story for you from Sunnyside. Now, this is a story about a forgotten soldier and a modern-day brother-in-arms who made sure that the mistake was corrected. Here and Now's David Zeltzer reports. This is a story about two soldiers from Sunnyside, one who died almost 100 years ago and was never properly recognized for his sacrifice, and another who almost a century later decided to right the wrong. Private John Charles Piercy from Sunnyside was 18 when he sailed with the Royal Newfoundland Regiment to Scotland in 1915. I didn't know a lot about him other than he was her brother and he got killed in the war. In her home in Norman's Cove, Piercy's niece Yvonne Warren has mementos of her uncle's life, his medals and a picture of John Charles Piercy with her mother. She was unaware that his name wasn't mentioned on a war memorial anywhere. And uh, I thought that it, what the, his name was there, right? But uh, apparently it wasn't. Not until she heard from another soldier from Sunnyside, Corporal Roger Snook. And uh, the first time I heard about a young guy by the name of John Charles Percy was about two years ago, July the 1st. Snook served in Afghanistan. He's in the reserves now, a Canadian ranger based in Gander. Two years ago, Snook was attending the Memorial Day service in his hometown when suddenly someone told him about the forgotten veteran. I said, gosh, we've got to do something for him. There's got to be some way to remember this man. So, uh, Roger was the man I turned to. And when I was driving back to Gander that evening, it just like stuck in my mind, eh? It just, for some reason, it just stuck in my head. It just didn't, it wasn't right. So, I started thinking to myself, well, I got to try and do something about it. And uh, when I got back to Gander, you know, And uh, it even came to the point that I had a dream about him on the battlefield. And uh, it was almost like he was saying, now that you know about me, don't let them forget about me. And uh, from the next day, Monday, I went to work and I took it upon myself to start doing some research about him. Snook tracked down Piercy's relatives, like Yvonne Warren. I know more about him now since I met Roger. He also found Yvonne's 91 year old brother, Robert Newhook, who's now in Whiteaway, and Newhook had a surprise. One of the few Newfoundlanders to survive the battle had witnessed Piercy's death and had told the story personally to Newhook. So I know what happened. In a match, somebody threw a hand grenade at Piercy and he fell. So I said, Piercy, he didn't know his name. He said, Elias Orford from Bunyan's Cove was with John when he fell and saw him when he fell. He said a young German soldier came out of the trenches and threw a grenade at him, and that's what killed him. Snook found medical records that show Piercy should have never been on the battlefield that day. He was being treated in a field hospital for trench foot. Days before the big battle, he begged to go back to his unit. But for somehow, for some reason, John was one of, one of the guys that made it past the danger tree. And he was at the German front lines with a pair of wire snippers that they all carried in their back pouches. He was kneeling down, cutting the German barbed wire fences. A young German soldier came out of the trench and threw a hand grenade at him. Well, this is a letter that he wrote, my grandfather wrote. And uh, what really got to me was a, <coughs> a letter that um, John Svater had wrote him. Uh, July the 17th, 1916, a few weeks after the battle, not knowing that John had died in the battle, he had uh, wrote the letter to, to John, hoping that he would get it. We are hoping that this terrible war will soon be over as we feel it keenly. God is good, and I trust my son that he will bring you through safe home again. Every time I read it, I cry. <laughs> you know, I do. Every time I read it, I cry. It's very touching. It consumed me. I wanted to, I didn't want to go to another July 1st ceremony and not have his name on the monument. 
Snook doesn't like to take credit for what happened next. He's very insistent that the new war memorial in Sunnyside with, for the first time, a marker for World War I veterans like Piercy was a community effort. But there's no doubt about Snook's efforts. He helped find money from the Department of Veterans Affairs and the town for the new memorial. A year after he found out about Piercy, last year's Memorial Day ceremony was held with the new monument already in place, thanks in large part to Snook and a lot of volunteers in Sunnyside. It's the most satisfying thing that I've uh, ever worked on and uh, gave me a great sense of, uh, of pride to know that a town was totally behind recognizing the tremendous sacrifice that these people made. And uh, I was so proud to see his name on the monument behind me. In the crowd at last year's ceremony, John Charles Piercy's relatives from all over the country, including Yvonne Warren. I thought it was a beautiful ceremony. It was absolutely beautiful. And what really impressed me when I saw the location of, this, of the monument, it was directly across the bay from where he grew up, where he was born. I thought it was so fitting. In February, Snook was at work when he opened an email. It was a pat on the back from his boss, actually his boss's boss's boss. I actually thought it was a prank, a joke that somebody was, uh, was playing and after I read it a couple of times, I realized that it wasn't, it was uh, straight from the Prime Minister's office. Corporal Roger Snook. Snook never wanted any recognition, but it just kept coming. Last spring in Gander, the military land forces Atlantic Area commendation for his efforts to have Private Piercy finally recognized. You know, it was wonderful for to care so much for the sacrifice that Uncle John gave, because when you give your life for your king and your country, you're giving the ultimate sacrifice, right? and for him to care enough to see that a monument would be erected in his honor. It was wonderful. I thought it was wonderful. Now his name is forever embedded on the stone behind me and everybody knows who he is. Before nobody knew who he was, now everybody knows who he is. And that's, that's a great thing. I was so proud to have it done. And Snook isn't done yet. He's planning on writing a book about Private Piercy. And his dream is to be in Beaumont Hamill in 2016 for the 100th anniversary of the battle to visit Piercy's grave. David Zelser, CBC News, Sunnyside.